So if you do slash warns, it shows the warns. If you do slash warn, I'm gonna warn myself test, uh, and then do warns, it shows that I warned myself once. And then if you do slash remove warn, we run in, let's say a, a lot, it removes the warns, and then remove warn. And then let's say you do a negative number, you, <laughs> it won't let you do that. So yeah. So let's get into it. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is go to the MongoDB's website, log in, and create a new project, which should be under projects, or projects, so I'm just gonna name this test. We create projects, and then now we can build a database. Oh yeah, before we do that, what you wanna do is go to network access, add IP address, this is where you can access it, and then allow access from anywhere. And the reason you wanna do this is because if you want Replit to be able to access your database, you can't have a set IP address because Replit's IP will change a bunch of times. So just do allow from anywhere, quick tip there. And then now we can build a database and we're just gonna do free. And the thing about MongoDB is you can create a bunch of free clusters. You wanna create a username and password. So this is just to log into your database. We're just gonna do test. <laughs> because why not copy this and create user. We already did this, so finish and close. Nice, and now we have our cluster zero. So we wanna connect this to our Python bot. So the way we do this is go to connect, connect to your application, select your driver, which would be Python, because that's what we're using. Select your Python version, and it'll actually give you the full code if you do this. You just copy this and close, and then we go back here and copy this. <laughs> And now we have to fill in the password. So because you're using Replit, you have to do client secrets. So and you have a password here. I'm gonna change this. Save. Okay, I saved my password. In the last tutorial, I did the same thing with bot tokens and stuff. So you can keep your stuff safe on Replit because Replit, anyone can access your code unless you buy Replit's premium tier. So now put the password in here. So we're gonna do an F string for this because it's super easy. If password equals os.environ and then we're gonna get the ID of this. So yeah, I'm probably gonna reset this or just delete the database afterwards. So it's completely safe and then we get the password so this will be the password so now we can create an f string it's already the way you format an f string is you put an f in front of the f string and then we just do this delete password printing db database just and run it well that's an issue whenever this happens you just gotta all right so now that actually worked and it actually gets MongoDB database. So now, create the slash command for warns and stuff. In the last video, I taught how to use slash commands. I didn't go that deep into it, but guild IDs equals server IDs. All right, so now we're just gonna do name equals warn, description equals warn a user. Now, we can do async def warn ctx, and then we want to do parameters. I didn't teach this in the last video, but can do context and then to do more parameters in a slash command, you wanna just put the name of the parameter, which would be user for this one, and you can do discord.option, and then the type of the option. So it's gonna be discord.member, and then you wanna put description, what user do you want to warn? We can add a separate parameter called a reason. So let's say you wanted to show the user why they were warned, you can do this, discord.option, and then we can just do string because that's all we need for this one. And now we can create the embed just to just to test. And then we're gonna do ctx.respawn and then embed. And let's test this. So if you run this, it should work. Oh, whoops. You also have to wait when you respond to stuff. There's a asynchronous uh, command. So you have to do embed is equal to embed because it's, it's a uh, parameter within response. So. It should work, yeah. Reason, and then we can just do, you know, input the reason for why. And then we can do something cool, like, because this is kind of bland, so color equals discord, discord.color.random. I think this creates a random color. Oh, I, I think you don't mention the class, so it's just discord.color.random. All right, and now it works and it has like a random color each time so so now we want to save this into our database so the way we do that would be we want to add our column let's, let's add a database first actually i'm going to call this warns and then server warns yeah okay and now we have a database set up so 
to get the column, which is this server warns thing, we're gonna do column equals, oh, we're gonna edit this and change it to warns, and then we're gonna do column equals database dot server warns. And then now, if we do, we're gonna try call dot insert one, which will insert one into the document, underscore ID, and we're gonna set this to the, actually let's create a dictionary, I forgot to do this. Um, we can do guild, and then we can do ID, or user ID, or something. So now we can make something that's easily accessible. So if you try to find something in the document, you can just do something that finds this. And now we're gonna do count, so the amount of warns, and then we're gonna set it to like one, because they have one warn. And then let's say we get a here, because if you do slash warn more than once, it'll insert this more than once. It'll give you a key error because you inserted the same ID twice, and that's going to give you an error. So we're gonna accept pymongo.errors.duplicate key error, and then we're gonna do call dot update one and then we're gonna put the id so the same format and then we're gonna do increment and then count increment this once oh i did this instead of this okay so the first parameter is the id that you want to access so we're gonna do the same one that we tried to access here and then the only difference is that we're updating it and incrementing it so there's actually tags i'll link it in the description hopefully if i remember if i don't Please comment about it. <laughs> Increment one. So by the way, if if none of this works or like you have any questions or anything, just ask me in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. This is this should work. So let's run this and we can check the database here. So now I've warned myself, and if we check the database, it shows that I now have a count of two, so it'll keep incrementing it, which is great. And we can do some checks, right? So obviously we don't want this user to be any random person that runs this command. Like let's say, I don't know, Jimmy, right? Jimmy is like a random Discord member and he's like, oh, I can run this command slash warn server owner. And then reason that you're the owner, right? And then it'll still work because we don't have any checks in place to make sure that it's not someone random. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna do, we're gonna check. So if user dot um, guild permissions dot manage members or manage guild I think and then we just indent all of this and then we do that's checking if th this will return true if the user has this permission and do else ctx dot respond you don't have permission to do that and then we're gonna do ephemeral equals true. Ephemeral, I, I spelled this wrong. It's spelled like this. Okay, so to check if this doesn't work, we can just do slash, or we can do not. And then if we rerun this, we can test it as if we're an average user. We forgot to await this. So uh, await, and then if we do slash warn, if we run test, it should say that I don't have permission even though I do. So. That's good, that means this works, and now we can just remove this, and we can make another command that checks for all the warns, or sends every warn that there is. Bot dot slash command, and then we can do guild, ids equals server, ids, name equals, uh, we're gonna do warns, description equals see all warns, and then we can do async def warns and then we don't need any parameters for this and oh wait we actually need ctx i forgot about that that's important uh and then we're gonna check from the database so the way you check from the database in column is you do call.find so it finds it and we can find things by id and so we're gonna do for user in users if user and then underscore id guild is equal to ctx dot guild then we're going to add the, let's call this end string, end string plus and equals. We're gonna add the a string of the user and the amount of warns. Okay, so first we're gonna get the um, ID of the user, 
and then from there we're going to get the guild of the user and all the this entire list so we're searching through this entire list user and then oh we have to use single quotes for this if we're going to be checking oh yeah so in an f string uh if you want to have another string within the f string you have to use single quotes or double quotes if you use single quotes here otherwise if you use like double quotes it's going to give you an error all right, so now we're going to be adding the ID, but we probably want to get that ID and change it into something like the user's name, right? So you do ctx.guild.getmember, and then we just get the user ID, and we can test this. ctx.respawn. Oh, wait. We forgot to do uh, underscore ID here. That's the issue. Okay, so I made a mistake here. So we're supposed to do ctx.guild.id. That's the ID, because we're getting the ID, not the actual guild object. And it should work now. You know, I mixed these two up, my bad. Uh, that will cause some issues. This can't be a string. Okay, there we go. All right, so now this part works, and it gets the member, prints it, and now we can add the part with the count. Count, and then that would be, it would just be as simple as user and then count because that's what we said it does oh this has to be single string whoops single string and like that and now that should work basically what this does is it gets the member by id from our database and then it gets the count from our database and it puts that in an end string so now we can do this in an embed and let's say we didn't have any members, um, we'd get an error. So check if it's false, which is the same as doing not end string, but this is more readable. And then now if we do uh, embed equals discord dot embed, we can create like a title equals this server doesn't have any warnings or warns. And then we can do embed equals embed, and then we can create a second embed. Embed equals the score dot embed title equals server warns encryption equals end string. There we go, it, and it shows the amount of warns I have. And if I up my warns, so blue robin test warns it shows that I have two warns. If end string was empty because there were no members on the list then it will still add it here but then we'll change it back to this server doesn't have any warns if it was false because this is empty so now we can create another slash command so at bot dot slash command for removing warns so guild underscore ids equals server underscore ids and then rename equals could do remove warn equals remove a, a user's warns. And then we're gonna do an amount for this. So we're gonna remove a certain amount. So async def remove warns. And then we're gonna have ctx user, which would be discord dot auction for dot member. So that's a user. And then we're gonna get the amount. So amount, and then we're gonna do int. And the amount will be the amount of warns they want to remove. We gotta check if the user dot guild permissions dot manage guild, and then we can do the same else statement here. Same else statement, of course. And then if we do if amount is less than one, we can do await ctx dot this one. You can't do that because. Um, Amount must be greater or equal to one. And then we can change the ephemeral to true. Just so people don't see that, you know, error message. And then if that is true, like amount is greater than one, then update the column. Uh, I think it was column dot update one. And then we're going to make the underscore ID. So we're gonna get the ID and we're going to make another dictionary just like before where we added one copy this just for ease of use and then we're going to set the user so this should still work paste this yep okay and then we're going to update this as increments so increment count to the amount 
Oh yeah, we also have to return zero here. Yeah, so we're gonna check if the count is less than one, like if it's zero, and then we're gonna delete it. So if column.find one, and then we're gonna do the same thing here, just copy paste this. Oh wait, we can delete this. Whoops, I forgot to delete that part. Okay, and then we're gonna check the count, and then if this is less than or equal to zero, then we're gonna do column.delete one, and then we're just gonna straight up delete this entire ID. This should be working. Oh wait, I don't need this uh, bracket. Oh, this needs to be on the outside. So here, because we're finding it, and then we're gonna display count. If we try to input like something else that's not an integer, it won't work. And you can pretty much input any value. And let's see if our database actually worked. Yeah, it deleted. Oh, wait, whoops. It added the warrants. I forgot to do something. So instead of incrementing it, we have to do incrementing it by negative amount. That's very important. Otherwise, it's just going to be adding. And then we're just going to do await ttx.respond. We're going to do, we're going to make an embed. Embed equals the squared dot embed removes warn for wait we can't do mentions in titles i think so we're just gonna put that in the description equals moved warn for user dot mention and then this needs to be a, an f string uh, user dot mention will mention the user here uh, in discord dot member and then removes warn because it could be multiple let me do a new line here new line removed amount warn ctx dot respond embed embed slash remove warns 300 whatever moves <laughs> 3 billion warns and if we do slash warns server warns it there's nothing there and yeah it just removes all of my warns it's great so yeah that's pretty much the end of this video hopefully this helped you create a warn system if you thought this was helpful maybe join my discord server where i actually have a discord bot that does the same thing. This Discord bot has a bunch of stuff like 2048, where I programmed 2048. This was completely from scratch. Um, yeah, you can check it out. It, it's it's kind of fun to make. If you want to join, uh, link in the description. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, tell me in the comments. I'll try to help you out. Thanks. Bye.